My name is Jody Koopman. Um, I'm the owner of the Sugar Shack. I make homemade candies and sweets. What I'm going to make today is some of the peanut butter crunch balls um, that were always a favorite. Um, there's a lot of people like peanut butter and chocolate. Um, and the crunch is Rice Krispies. So it's um, a little bit like a peanut butter cup and then you have the crunch from the Rice Krispies and um, it's just something that's I guess a little sweet but not overly sweet. Uh, my personal history with food um, started very young. Um, grew up on a farm and so we always raised a lot of garden and had mother and grandmother that uh, did a lot of baking. Um, so I got started with that and my grandmother introduced me to some candy making and it kind of took off from there. Okay, so I'm gonna mix butter and peanut butter together first. What we're gonna do today is to make one of her fav everybody's favorite candies. Um, it was something that we always made at Christmas time, and uh, us kids would fight over the last one. <laughs> okay, and then add some powdered sugar, which is the messy part. Yeah, this is a smaller version. Um, normally I would do twice as much in one batch, but um, I didn't want to get too many ahead. <laughs> so, <clears throat> and I have some that are ready to um, be dipped too. So, this takes a little while. My hands get tired, so <laughs> it goes a little slower sometimes. I'm gonna get it all mixed in. Okay. My favorite aspect of making these peanut butter balls, um, I think is um, the finished product, how they come out at the end. Um, 
it just looks very nice and it's always a remembrance of growing up in my grandmother. And then I'm gonna add some Rice Krispies. We always considered it a candy. Um, you could maybe classify it as a cookie, um, but it is um, pretty sweet and it's not something that is baked. So living in this area, um, food is always a focus, I guess. Um, I come from a farming background, so we raised our own food. Um, we always had a large garden and um, would have our own meat butchered. So. Um, Everything was was very much local and, and family grown and, and made. Um, and I think now um, with so much focus on the food in the area and the farmers markets, it's um, really nice um, that there's so much variety. Um, that you can um, go to the farmer's market and bring home, you know, a complete meal from your vegetables and your meat to dessert. Mm -hmm. So anyway, this is um, now mixed up and we'll put it in the refrigerator and usually chill it overnight for several hours and then uh, roll it up into balls and then you have to chill it again for several hours <clears throat> so this one's kind of a long process um, but i have some that we'll get out of the fridge now put these in i hope food continues to be a focus locally um, i think we have an area that's um, uh, very diverse um, in what we can grow and so then we get a lot of variety um, to eat and I think it's very nice and very important that the local economy supports the small growers and the small businesses um, because you know who you're getting your food from. You know it's going to be um, an excellent um, product. And let's see, I'll have to melt some chocolate to dip these, so. spent a lot of time um, with my grandmother um, and growing up um, my mother was out would help with chores so as kids we 
kind of had the run run of the place during chore time and um, you know if it was harvest tobacco harvest time um, there was always a lot of baking to do um, the workers always had a, a morning lunch and dinner and an afternoon lunch so my grandmother was always baking and she would uh, recruit help when she could and when she needed it so we always spent a lot of time doing that and at Christmas time um, we would put together plates of cookies and candy for the neighbors and friends so we always had a good time doing that. my grandmother she I can't remember if it was something I saw and um, wanted to try or if she just found it on her own but she had given me one year for Christmas some little candy molds chocolate molds and um, gotten me some chocolate to, to start with so I started playing with those and and then as I got older I would um, I got a little bit more into, especially like Christmas time baking and and making different candies and and then uh, after um, after I started working and stuff and um, I'd have coworkers and and friends that would you know they'd find out I'd make candy and they'd ask me to make something for them for Christmas or or whatever so it just kind of grew from there. Ready and dip some of these. I just, I really liked um, baking and candy making. So even from a pretty young age, I knew I wanted to someday have a candy shop. My hopes have kind of changed over the years um, as I've grown up, you know, and what, what I'm able to do. So um, several years ago, I was able to build a home and then I was finally able to get a certified kitchen so that I could make my own candy and, and uh, kind of go more public, I guess, in more places I could sell. So. But one of the other um, favorite recipes that we always used growing up was for fudge and I've taken that recipe and um, modified it to make different flavors um, so like a white I'll do a white chocolate fudge um, maple nut peppermint so that was pretty fun to play with. And sometimes I'll see another candy or a recipe and it'll just kind of give me an idea for um, something different of my own. And so I'll just kind of 
play around with it until I get what I think I want. Um, like this though is um, almond bark actually so it's um, already prepared to melt it's, so there's nothing to nothing that needs to be added to it Um, I think my favorite thing to make is probably the sweet and salty caramels. Um, it's a homemade caramel that's dipped in chocolate and then sprinkled sea salt on top. So it's something a, a little different and uh, for me it goes pretty fast. It's not very easy to mess up. <laughs> I don't get many duds from that, so that's always a good thing. Usually the holiday season, um, my mother will help me out. Um, we, I do some bigger shows then and I get um, quite a few orders for the holidays. So she'll give me some help on her days off. If it's something new, then we'll take a um, sample and try it um, to see if the flavoring is right. A lot of the recipes I do though, I've, uh, you know, they're either a family recipe that we've made for many, many years or it's something that I've done a lot of these now for, um, for the business for several years. But, but it's fun. It's um, uh, it's nice to see that people really enjoy it, um, and you know they are really, um, I guess, really glad to see some homemade items versus store-bought candy. Um, I do buy my ingredients um, locally as much as possible. Um, sometimes, you know, travel to lacrosse to get um, things, some things a little more in bulk than what I can get in town. But I try to stay local as much as possible. And I've got a full pan, so I'm going to put these in the fridge.
I'm just gonna drizzle a little bit of peanut butter topping over top. Hopefully make it look a little prettier. Um, there's a lot of people like peanut butter and chocolate. Um, and the crunch is Rice Krispies. So it's um, a little bit like a peanut butter cup. And then you have the crunch from the Rice Krispies. And um, it's just something that's, I guess, a little sweet, but not overly sweet. just looks very nice and it's always a remembrance of growing up in my grandmother. <laughs> <laughs>